So with our Resolution MD product, it allows uh, access to, we're referring physicians to their reports, uh, images online, without downloading any data to the device at all. Gives them immediate access, regardless of whether they are whether on, they're on wireless or on, uh, on, a, on any um, telco's uh, 3G, 4G networks. Gives you the capabilities to do a lot of the reconstructions. So being able to go in, jump into uh, NPR capabilities, so being able to reconstruct the data very quickly, very easily. Scrolling through the data, looking at the, the different types of anatomy and pathology that's available. So is that reconstruction happening on the iPad? No, all the reconstruction is actually being done on our server. And so no data is actually coming to the device. Nothing's being rendered on the device itself. It's all being done on the server side. It's completely done there. Again, being able to get into 3D, doing 3D rendering uh, on the iPads, on iPhones, Android devices, it doesn't matter. Uh, it can also be done on a, on a web product as well. So any, any web browser is the same level of type of functionality capability. So what kinds of things can you change on the screen right now? You can zoom in and out? You can zoom in, you can do zoom in and out. We have our we have our what we call our lens tool, which gives us a very quick view into the, into the anatomy, getting past a lot of the bony structure. Especially if you're looking at skulls, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to see the vas vascular uh, nature in behind us uh, behind the skull. So the, the lens view is looking at a different plane in the 3D model. There, it's going it's going deeper within the 3D model uh, in this case. And obviously, you can change windowing and and, you can and change apply your own level. CLUT. So double tapping gives you the gives you adjustments on the on the opacity settings, and 2D gives you the, gives you a change in the uh, the window level settings. So if I flip into back into my 2D view here, I can also do all the typical zoom uh, and pan type type motions typical to any of the any of the mobile devices. We try to maintain the philosophy of the individual mobile devices rather than try and recreate a user experience, give the users the experience that they expect on these devices. You can make measurements, you know, measure house field units, distances. Uh, measurements we can do on the web, yeah. on, the, on, the, on the mobile products is something we're looking at developing into to be able to do, do the measurement capabilities. It's more about the user experience and how they handle, because uh, a lot of times if you're doing measurements it's very difficult to see the area because it's under your fingertip. Where is the data right now? All our data is actually being stored, so we do all the rendering in, on our server. Um, so, which is in a data center or the facility, we maintain all the data in the packs. So we only we only ask for the data when the user wants the data. We don't actually uh, store any additional data. We don't create a second database for IT IT facilities. To actually, have to create a, a second database and maintain a second database. We keep it all in the packs where it belongs. Exactly. So this this data right now is at the imaging center or at the hospital. That's correct. You you sort of keep a temporary copy of it on your server. In this case, I guess Chicago is the demo server. That's right. So and we, then uh, and then it'll beam it to the iPad, sort of slice by slice. And then when you're done with the session. Right. When you end the session, there's no data left on the on the device. There's no data left on our server. So you're back to where you started. So you're back to where you started. Exactly. Sure. If you're on the web product and you and you uh, and you do things like you do some advanced NPR, you create a new series, you do some measurements, save secondary captures. We'll push all that new data back into the originating packs. Uh, so oh, see, so, so if you're a reading radiologist and you're allowed to change the data right. set or, or put bookmarks in. Right. So you can always send that back right in back into the packs again. It, you don't have to try and reconcile the data at a later time. If you've got a secondary cache, you can just push it all straight back into the packs. Now, I know that this uh, uh, mobile app is FDA approved or cleared right now? It is FDA cleared for uh, diagnostic for CT and MR on the iPad and the iPhone. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, which is one of, the, we're one of the few companies that have got that, uh, that clearance now. Now, I know one of the issues with that is that lighting condition. So you guys have a testing or calibration for that? That's correct. So one of the big things was exactly was around around the reading environment, the reading lights. So we have added in the capability for the users to actually verify the ambient light capability and to understand what their reading conditions are and if it's appropriate for them to do the diagnostic or not. Great. So uh, I think you also mentioned that you can actually sort of do a, a synchronized uh, session. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the one of the big new features we're adding to the products is the ability to uh, collaboration. What this allows us to do, if you imagine, you know, with, with mobility, users are more and more spread apart in the in the world. But they need to still be able to communicate with each other about about particular cases and about particular pathology. So what we can do is opening up a session. I can send out a very quick email to to a group, to my my trauma team, to a radiologist, to a referring physician, to a specialist, whoever I want to communicate to, whether they're part of the facility or uh, part of my part of my uh, part of my group or not. So if I send out an email. That goes out to a, to a separate session. So somebody else with a, a, the same app running on a different device in this case. Yeah, so it be, could be the same app. It could be you know a different app, a different device. Yeah. It could be they could be on the web. Doesn't matter. They hit a URL link in their email. It launches straight into this into the into the session. They put a user, put a name and an email address so we can track who it was that joined the session. And now we have full interactivity between the two devices. So actually, I know that the thing in your hand is a, is a, is a Samsung Galaxy, so it's running on Android. So it's Android, so we're communicating directly with an iPad. 
Uh, so, so let's put the screens together, and it's pretty interesting what's happening right now. So with these two screens together, you can see we've got the complete interactivity between the two devices. So I'm scrolling on the on the Galaxy right now. You can see that if I flip over to my to my iPad, I've got there. You can, also, we have, we allow the users to actually turn on a on a cursor, so I can turn off the interactivity, and I can actually use a cursor. So you can see the red cursor pointing on the Android device, and that's actually where my finger is on the iPad. So in this case, a reading radiologist could take a surgeon through a case actually pointing out the, the structures in question. Exactly. And vice versa, I could ask questions of radiologists. Yeah, so I can scroll through going, uh, you know, this is the area that I was concerned about. The radiologist can go, no, 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 what you need to be concerned about is further down, you know, what it, what it joins here. And also, that you can, if I flip into my 3D reconstructions, both devices go into 3D. And so all the data is being streamed from, in this case, Chicago. So. You can build as many sessions as you want. Exactly right. Yeah. So it's you know not really it's not about uh, the number of users right now. It's about the number of you know sessions that are being shared out amongst a very large group. So the, the use cases for this you know it's a specialist to specialist, grand rounds, teaching facilities. You know there's an endless number of, of use cases. Referring physicians going back to the patients and being able to share results back to a patient who may not be able to come back into the office for uh, for their results or anything else. Yeah, Those obviously teleradiology. I mean this, this is a great business yeah. model. Oh yeah, teleradiology. Yeah. And how do you sell this? I mean, what's your business model? So we sell directly, we sell through uh, other companies, so business to business, so other PAX vendors, uh, other large archiving vendors, the EMR companies can take advantage of this technology. So we do all business to business, and then they sell that through then to the end user. Great, I'm excited to see it in, in live in, in production. It's a very exciting time and a very exciting technology to be a part of. Thank you, Greg.